Hi everyone, today I'm talking about JD.com and if it's time to go sell JD.com. Now if you don't know, I am a shareholder in JD.com. I've held shares in JD.com since about $20. So I am currently up about 100% on my position right now, which is quite a decent amount really. And when I get up to this kind of amount, I look at a company and I'm thinking, is it time to go take some profit? Maybe it's time to sell the whole position or maybe trim the position slightly. And when I kind of have a jump in a stock like this, I always think it's good to reevaluate what's going on and if it's worth taking that profit. So we're gonna take a look and see if it's the right time to trim that position slightly or carry on holding them shares right now. So I have some positives about the company and I have some negatives about the company. Also, we do have JD.com earnings coming up next week and I don't have any plans to sell until them earnings really because I do think the earnings will be good. Judging by Alibaba's earnings as well, it does seem like JD.com should pull out a strong earnings in that first quarter going forward. And also we probably have some news about what they're thinking about the coronavirus from here, which obviously is one of the big talking points about JD.com right now. So I'm going to go through the positive reasons of why I'm thinking about maybe keeping them shares in JD.com. And the first positive is JD.com itself, its stock control, how it manages its e-commerce site. Now, the big thing that originally attracted me into JD.com is it was at such a low valuation at how much it was doing to improve the company with its uh, warehouses, with its logistics side and how it was able to control its own stock. And that was the big difference between Alibaba and JD.com is how much control JD.com has over its own products compared to how Alibaba pretty much uses third party sellers to sell a lot of their products. And when I looked at the valuation and how much infrastructure JD had in place and how they were able to stop counterfeit goods unlike Alibaba, I felt like JD.com was massively undervalued at the time compared to where Alibaba was and that was at the back end of 2018 and that's why I originally bought JD.com instead of Alibaba at the time and I still like it right now how much they're able to control the stock and going forward that's really going to help them. They are known as the Amazon of China because they are pretty much how Amazon manages a lot of their products. They do exactly the same compared to Alibaba who don't really manage that kind of products and when we look at that they were able to actually beat Amazon in China which not many companies have been able to do. Amazon are pretty much gone like oh JD have this sector tied down we can't go in there let's not bother with it anymore and it's pretty much the only company that's actually gone do one Amazon you're not coming in here which is really good for JD.com so the, that's one of the big reasons why I got into it and that's why I still like the company compared to a lot of other companies out there in this sort of sector is the infrastructure and the control they have over the products that they are able to sell. My second point is logistics. Now, JD.com have spent so much money on the infrastructure, and this is kind of one of the reasons why they've not been profitable as early as they could be, because they've been putting a lot of money into this logistics side of the company, and now it's starting to really pay off for them. It is not exactly profitable just yet, but what they have done and where they're going with it, it will at some point turn positive, I'm sure about that. Now what JD.com is they've built hundreds of warehouses to manage a lot of these products. They've also invested in a lot of transport, like a drones, driverless vehicles, and all these kind of services that are able to get packages out. I think it's something at a rate of 90% in 24 hours. And as well as that, they've kind of now started to do express deliveries where they're delivering a lot of parcels in under an hour, which is absolutely insane to think people are ordering off their website and they're actually able to deliver these parcels in an hour. Now there is rumors that logistics could get IPO'd by its own. Uh, that's one of the rumors going out right now. But let's look at the logistics right now and it's fantastic the amount of money they've spent on that and what this has led to now is that other companies are starting to use jd.com's logistics because they're that fantastic and they're going let's use yours because yours is the best around and if this carries on a lot of people are going to start coming to jd.com and asking them to use their services that they've built up and like i said over the long term it's really going to pay off for them and it's starting to already and we noticed that over like the last year the third reason is the EPS and the sales growth. The EPS is probably going to be doubling this year. Sales wise, we're looking at something in the 30% range. Depends how what really happens with the coronavirus really. But the EPS and sales is still, still strong from JD.com. They are still all doing this in a weakening Chinese economy as well, which is fantastic. And they haven't really shown any signs of weakness with what's going on. With the amount of growth that has happened in the middle class in China and the growth that will carry on going on in the middle class of China and how much the e-commerce online is just you know, exploding really, 
I think JD at Acoma have EPS and sales doing really well. And like I say, the only reason why EPS has been like flat so long is because they've just put so much money into the infrastructure of the company. And over the next few years, um, especially the next kind of two to three years, I see this really, you know, working out for the company. And EPS is, you know, for sure going to be like doubling nearly every year. So over the next two to three years, I still see massive sales and EPS growth for JD.com. Another positive for JD.com is the amount of partners they have. They are working with a lot of companies, Tencent being one of them, Google, Walmart, all these kind of big backers, what will help them grow a lot of these services that JD.com are offering. There's also a lot of tie-ins now between Tencent and JD.com and just services like WeChat and you know building that into JD.com as well. So using these partners, it's only going to be helping them grow going forward. And I'm really happy they've got some of the biggest partners around to help them grow the company going forward. And as well as all this that's happening now with JD.com, they are looking to expand into other countries as well, which will really help them grow. Um, so they're not kind of settling down a little bit more. They're going to carry on expanding. So for me, when we look at all these positives, and these are only some of them, I could I could really fill this whiteboard out with a lot of positives with some of the smaller stuff that's going on, but these are some of the main reasons for the positives that are going on in JD.com right now. Now, some of the negatives is obviously the coronavirus. We know this could affect JD.com. We're unsure how much it's gonna affect JD.com, and we're unsure what's gonna to happen to the coronavirus. Is it gonna go and carry on? Uh, we're gonna have more cases. Is the case is going to start slowing down? How much is this going to affect the Chinese economy? We don't really know. And this is one of the biggest things that happens with um, JD.com right now is there's going to be probably a few panic sellers in there that are going to be selling because of the coronavirus and what's going to happen going forward because when there's a lot of uncertainty in the market, that's when people tend to sell. So that is one of the negatives that's going on with the company right now. The second reason is profit taking. Now, obviously, I'm up 100% on my position right now. Plenty of other people are in that $20 mark to where it's gone up. People have bought in there. We also have the people that have been up at $50 and they're probably thinking right now, it's getting close to where I got in. I took a massive hit. Let me break even, let's sell the stock. So we've got all the people on the downtrend that might be wanting to sell out the company because they've been down so long on the position. We also have all the people that are going upwards and thinking, is it time to take some pop, uh, profit? Especially with some of the what is happening now with a lot of the geopolitical stuff as well they might be thinking about taking some profit so there's two lots of people there that might take some profit and that might hurt the stock in the short term as well so it's always you know thinking about what other people could do and that could affect the stock so there could be a bit of profit taking in general on this stock right now now the next reason is the ceo which i actually think he does a good job as a ceo um I'm, i think he's really done well with jd.com we just know that there's been a lot of um, negative incidents about him. Um, he's never been charged for it. But when you're in the wrong place at the wrong time twice, I've always had that thing about now I'm getting a little bit nervous. And just to be in there in the wrong place at the wrong time twice is a little bit worrying for me. But as a CEO, I think he does a fantastic job. I just think that maybe he needs to sort where he's at in his personal life out just slightly. Um, so that's one little negative that I do have about management in this company. And the last one is Alibaba, and I always consider, is it worth having more money in one company than the other? And which one's more undervalued? Now, back in 2018, I said that JD.com is more undervalued than Alibaba. Towards 2019, the back half, I felt that Alibaba was uh, more undervalued than JD.com. And when I look right now, I do think Alibaba is probably a little bit more undervalued than JD.com, just because of the amount of uh, how diverse Alibaba's revenue stream is and how much the stock's gone up really over the last kind of um, year, two years. The stock's only gone up uh, 30%, 40%. Whereas JD.com's up 100% and I'm looking, right, which one has had the better run? It's JD.com, which is probably a little bit more undervalued uh, at a lower P as well. It's Alibaba. So I kind of think, is it worth having, you know, more sell some profit in JD and move to Alibaba? But at the moment, I do own both stocks right now. Uh, at the moment of recording this video, uh, my Alibaba position is bigger than my JD.com position. Uh, but at the same time, both companies are fantastic, as you can see from some of the positives that we had in the company uh, a little bit earlier in the video. So my overall thinking about this, and if it's time to sell JD.com, looking at some of the negatives, uh, I see a lot of only short-term negatives with the company. And overall, when we look at how the company is going to do over the next two to three years, it's going to do fantastic. And looking at what could happen with the share price, 
It looks like JD.com share price could probably actually in the next two to three years, maybe even double, maybe even triple where it is at right now. Um, with some of the, these fantastic growth that it has right now. So even though there's a few negatives out there, um, I feel like it's worth holding some shares in this company because of how well it's going to do. And when I've got a cost basis of only $20 a share, it seems a bit stupid to sell them really. And like I said, a long, about six months ago, I did take some profit on the company, uh, about a third of a position. So right now with the position I have and what I see the positives long-term for this company, um, I don't think I'm willing yet just to share, sell some shares. Maybe if we ta start talking, if the company goes up another 50%, um, maybe then I might trim the position slightly. Um, but I think when we look ahead with this company, I see it doing fantastic and that share price going up. So right now for me, I'm not willing to really sell any shares in J.com because I think it's going to do fantastic. And I thought I'd share that with you today because obviously it's really useful to reevaluate uh, positions when they start getting up, you know, 100%. Is it time to start trimming and taking profit? But for me right now, I'm quite happy to hold on to my shares and I thought I'd share that with you because uh, I think some of you guys are JD.com shareholders as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you could give it a like, that'd be absolutely amazing. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you on the next video.